where the soras shiva of late there is a tendency to call out some great kings of ancient india as shiva or vainava especially we have seen it with the sora kings including the great raja raja sora some people even claim that they are not hindu so is this correct this is a question asked by a viewer let us try to answer this there are three problems issues when we call the soras or raja raja sora as a shaivite or a shaiva king it implies somehow that he venerated only shiva it is also used to imply that maybe he was in opposition to those who worship vishnu and it is also used to somehow imply that the entire sora dynasty right from the beginning was this way and their worship was somehow sectarian in nature this is completely wrong first of all the soras built and maintained huge temples in worship of all aspects of the divine shiva vishnu shakti kartikeya ganesha and also surya by the way the soras even built a temple for chitragupta the assistant of yama they also commissioned jaina temples and buddha viharas and this dharmic pluralism was common for most dynasties across ancient india in ancient india you could choose the form of the godhead that you resonated with the most you could have it as your ishta devata and even the kings did that but it did not mean that they disrespected the other versions of the godhead also it did not mean that their entire lineage had to do the same a king could have shiva as his ishta devata and his son could have vishnu as his ishta devata again it did not mean that they denigrated the other versions of the godhead in fact the soras actually considered themselves to be kings of the solar dynasty the suryavanshis this is not just mentioned by the soras but it is also mentioned in ancient tamil texts like the silappadigaram there are copper plates from the time of sundara sora who was the father of rajaraja sora that trace the lineage of soras all the way back to vishnu as the progenitor of their race in fact they regarded him as the first king again they were not sectarian but very much encouraged dharmic pluralism let me give you more examples from just the sora dynasty because that is specific to the question there are 108 divya desams temples considered to be the most sacred in vaishnava tradition these are the temples that are eulogized in the works of the alwar saints many more than 30 of these were built by the soras they also maintained all the other divya desams that were within their kingdom one of the most sacred temples dedicated to mahavishnu is the sri rangam temple the famed sri rangam temple was developed actually by the sora rulers when they were a nominal power known as the urayur soras they didn't even have the hegemony and the control that they had later this was way before the time of raja raja the smaller mandapas which are in the inner part of the temple were built almost 2000 years ago by these soras this is one of the most sacred shrines in the vaishnava tradition by the way the soras were also patrons of the most famous tirumala venkateshwara temple tirupati as many know it in fact they are intricately linked to some legends surrounding these temples the father of the great raja raja parantaka the second was also known as sundara soran he developed the famous sundara raja perumal temple dedicated to mahavishnu which is a divya desam inscriptions record generous grants of sundara soran to this temple coming to raja raja himself the great raja raja had mahadeva shiva as his ishta devata there is no denying this but this does not mean that he was against the worship of other aspects of the godhead far from it it is said that the same raja raja built and maintained the koranganatha temple dedicated to mahavishnu his son the great rajendra sora too built numerous temples including the famed gangai kunda solapuram a sora like rajendra who had shiva as his ishta devata shared generous donations to the upliyappan temple which is a very holy temple dedicated to mahavishnu it also is a divya desam again rajendra never even thought remotely of disrespecting the temple even today inscriptions in the tirunageshwaram temple corroborate the constructions and the donations that the great rajendra undertook 
in the Upuliyappan temple. And this was the norm in the ancient world. The king Senganan Soran built 73 Shiva temples including the famous Jambukeshwara temple. As one of his last efforts, he built the famed Divya Desam Nachiyar Kovil dedicated to Mahavishnu. And he did not stop bestowing grants on the existing Vishnu temples. The beautiful Sarangapani temple in Kumbakonam dedicated to Mahavishnu stands right next to the Adi Kumbeshwara temple dedicated to Mahadeva Shiva. These were temples maintained by the Soras. And the list goes on. The same Soras also developed the Tirukkudalur Jagatrakshaka Pirumal Temple, the Tirukkavitalam Gajendra Bharada Pirumal Temple, the Tiruchairai Saranathan Temple, the Nandipuram Vinnagaranathan Kovil, Tiruvellayangudi Kola Valvil Ramar Kovil and many more Divya Desams and other temples dedicated to Mahavishnu. Even the famed Varadaraja Pirumal Temple in Kanchipuram as inscriptions that record the contributions of the Solas. In fact, the temple went through major renovations during the time of Kulothunga Sholan I and his son Vikrama Sholan. The same Kulothunga Sholan built the famed Suryanar temple dedicated to the sun god as Surya. He had friendly relationships with the Gahadavalas of Kanauj and he saw their veneration of the sun god Surya. He liked it and he built a temple dedicated to Surya. As simple as that. What resonates with you is very important. The ancient Vinayagar temple dedicated to Lord Ganesha in Kanipakam was also built and developed by the same Kulothunga Solan. The Solas built and maintained the Vyalur Murugan temple. Before they went for war, the Solas actually worshipped their family deity Nisumba Sudhani, who was a manifestation of Shakti. I will not bore you with more examples. So, the Soras built huge temples for all aspects of the divine Saiva, Vainava, Sakta, Kumara, Ganapatya and Saura. And more importantly, they helped with the upkeep of many many temples irrespective of the presiding deity. By the way, I have used the word built and maintained because in many cases, most of the temples in ancient India were already sacred spots since time immemorial. And by built, we mean that the temples were developed and maintained by these kings. Of course, they also built and developed temples right from scratch. So you can see that the Solas were not sectarian and for that matter, neither were the other dynasties. This Dharmic pluralism extended to the Pallavas who preceded the Solas and the Pandyas who succeeded the Solas. The same Pallavas who built the Kailasanadar temple dedicated to Mahadeva Shiva also built the beautiful Parameshwara Vinnagaram dedicated to Mahavishnu. That is also a temple which is among the 108 Divya Desams. The Solas and the Pandyas maintained all these temples including the ones built by the enemy kings. Their enmity was only towards the kings and not the gods venerated by the kings because they respected all aspects of the Supreme Absolute. The kings actually encouraged debates. They would have learned scholars, philosophers having discussions. If they felt that a particular viewpoint was appealing to them, they would have the freedom to follow that viewpoint. But that did not mean, again, it did not mean that they would somehow stop maintaining the modalities of worship that were different from their viewpoint. Even a king having a predominantly Saiva bent of mind would bestow generous contributions to the upkeep of Vaishnava temples, as we have seen. This is to be clearly understood. Just go to any ancient temple city and you will see the temples that stand there. Kumbakonam, Kanchipuram, Madurai, Rameshwaram, you will see the temples dedicated to all aspects of the Godhead standing right next to each other. The recorded destruction began to happen only during the time of the Kilji dynasty. For example, the Meenakshi Amman temple built by the Pandyas were destroyed by Malik Kafur and the armies of the Delhi Sultanate. The kings of the Vijayanagara Empire rebuilt this temple and this was the same dynasty that built the magnificent Vijayavitala temple in Hampi dedicated to Vishnu and also maintained the ancient Virupaksha temple dedicated to Mahadeva Shiva. This Dharmic pluralism was true across ancient India. Go to Yellora, Gwalior, Hampi, you can still see this pluralism in the temples. This is how Dharmic veneration was. So where the Soras, Hindu, where they Saiva, you have the answer. They were very much Hindu, they were very much Dharmic and they were a part of this Dharmic pluralism 
that was common across ancient India. As always, the known is a drop and the unknown an ocean. Peace.